Hi, my name's Anna and today I want to talk to you about the main sources of English law that we look at in A-level law. So the main laws that we're interested in are the laws of England and Wales and there are lots of different sources so I've just picked out a few key ones here to help give you an introductory understanding to the grounding of the English legal system. So you'll notice quite controversially at the top here, we have European Union law. Now this applies to all members of the European Union. Now, although we've left the European Union now, we do still have a lot of legacy law. So that means laws that are still applicable that they originally gave us. We need to know about the three types of European Union law. You have treaties, regulations and directives. Treaties are the big, almost contracts between the member countries. So when we joined the EU, we signed a treaty and when we left, we signed a treaty. Regulations are laws that the European Union has set that every member state must follow, no questions asked. They automatically become law, so we didn't have to do anything when we were members for those to be legally binding. Perhaps one of the most famous regulations set by the European Union was the ability for countries to fish in waters that didn't belong to their own country. Spanish fishermen tried to fish in English waters. They were blocked by law and the Spanish fishermen sued, saying that they were allowed to because there was a regulation. The UK tried to say that we didn't agree to this but the European court overruled that. They said that the European law was um, forced, first and foremost, and that came in the case of factor term. Directives, however, are rules that are set by the European Union, but there is some leeway in how the member states can interpret and apply some of it. So a good example of this is laws on product placements in TV shows. European Union Directive said that we had to allow product placement for the first time in British TV, but there were lots of leeway about how and when we could decide to include it. So for example, UK Britain decided that we wouldn't have product placement in the news or in children's TV shows because they're very easily suggestible. Now the European Union gave us flexibility to decide that we had to have the overall framework of law for it was up to us to decide the details. So the overall law is the same in all member countries. All member countries of the European Union allow product placement. However, the details may slightly differ. The European Union is only supreme on matters of European Union law. So for example, very little of UK criminal law is covered by the European Union. Another key source is parliamentary law. Now, this is actually our primary, our first and foremost type of law in Britain. These are also referred as acts or acts of parliament. So, for example, when you look at voluntary manslaughter, we will talk a lot about the Coroners and Justice Act 2009. That is an act of parliament. And in our country, parliamentary law is supreme. That means everybody must follow it. It is binding on all. You may see this referred to statute law as well, or statutes. Now, parliamentary law is often made through a quite a long drawn out process. An idea for a law starts out as something called a bill. This is the rough draft, if you like, of what a law will look like. It is then debated, often in quite some depth, in both the House of Commons and the House of Lords, the two Houses of Parliament. Generally speaking, both of those houses must agree on the same version of law. If not, there are certain powers that allow the House of Commons to override this, but this is very, very rarely used. Once the House of Commons and House of Lords have agreed on what the law should say, it is then passed to the monarch, the Queen, for royal assent. She simply signs it. She gives her assent. She gives her signature. It hasn't been since the 1600s that a monarch has refused to sign something Parliament has decided. Once the Queen signs a law, it usually commences at midnight. It becomes binding from then. 
Now, Parliament also has a hand in some other types of lawmaking that you look at called delegated legislation. This means they give their powers to other people. We've especially seen this during the coronavirus pandemic where government has made some very fast, very quick rules about what can and can't be done during the pandemic. Probably the main type of law that we look at at A-level is common law. Now, common law is also known as judge-made law or judicial precedent. All of those terms mean the exact same thing. And as you guessed, these are laws that are made by judges in their judgments. So when people take a case to court, the judges will hear both sides and they'll make a decision, a judgment. They'll say who wins and why, or they'll say if a person's guilty or why. This then creates a template for all of us to follow in future for the sake of fairness. So for example, if I am able to sue my employer for the certain reason, that means in future other people can sue for that same certain reason. A key example of common law is a case called Donahue versus Stevenson. This was where a woman got sick after drinking a bottle of ginger beer that had a rotting snail inside. She wanted to sue, but she hadn't bought the drink. Her friend did. And a friend can't sue under contract law because she wasn't ill. Now, the judges in that case thought this was really unfair. So they created a new precedent. They created a new ruling that said manufacturers of, of products of food and drink, they have to care about the ultimate consumer. In other words, the person who actually eats, drinks, uses the product rather than the buyer themselves. This is really useful, for example, of buying things for children. Now, it wouldn't be very fair if Mrs. Donahue could sue under that rule, but no one else could. She would be getting special treatment. So what that decision now means is that if I open a can of pop and inside there is a rotting slug or a rotting snail and I get sick, I already know I can sue. Because back in 1932, Mrs. Donoghue was able to do it, so should I. Now, there is a very complex set of rules involved in this, but the concept at the core is very simple. The higher the court, the more weight their judgment carries. The highest court in England Wales is the Supreme Court. So when they make a decision, everyone below has to follow it. So, for example, the Court of Appeal must follow it. The High Court must follow it. Now, if the Court of Appeal makes a decision, clearly the High Court has to follow it because they're below them. These are superior. However, the Supreme Court doesn't have to because they're above. If you have a job, this is a familiar concept. If your boss's boss makes a decision, you can't just choose to ignore it. You have to do what your boss tells you. The same happens with a system of precedent. So this is common law and offences and torts are developed this way over time. As each new case comes to court, we get a new ruling and cases are being decided all the time. You'll probably find that during a two year study at A-levels, there will always be new precedents to hear about. The last main source of English law I wanted to discuss with you are local bylaws. And you probably see these without even really noticing. Now, these are special laws that are made on the authority of Parliament by local councils and certain public companies. And they are allowed to make very localised, specialised laws that relate to their land. So, for example, the National Trust is allowed to make laws that relate to their property and what people can do on it to keep people safe and to keep the services running. Local councils have the authority to make laws to affect their towns, cities, to keep them safe and smoothly running. It wouldn't make sense to have our Houses of Parliament, which are based in London, deciding all of the local rules for all of the towns and cities up and down the country. A really interesting thing for you to do is to have a look at where you live look up your local council and see what laws only apply to you. So for example, one local bylaw is that no skateboarding is allowed in Eldon Square shopping centre. Now, 
that's probably not of too much concern to the people down in London in Parliament, so they don't need to make a nationwide rule. Instead, what they've done is they've allowed Newcastle City Council to make their own laws. But as you can imagine, they only apply to Newcastle City, and that one, of course, only applies to Elton Square. Another really good example is Tynham Weir Metro. In fact, it's a good example of both. They're a local public company. They're allowed to make laws that only apply to the metro system to make sure they run smoothly. So for example, they can fine you if you smoke on the metro or you travel without a ticket. Those are laws that are made by them for them. And as I said, up and down the country, you'll find that different towns, different cities have different bylaws. So for example, a seaside town, such as South Shields, will have a very, very different set of laws to a company, uh, a, sorry, a town that's inland, such as Nottingham. So all of these different laws come together alongside others to create our English legal system. We don't have a single written constitution like America does. All of our laws are found in different sources and apply to criminal law, contract law, tort law, amongst others. I hope that gives you a good grounding of the system and the laws that you will look at over A-levels. Thank you for watching.